leadership that's not scared to be kind, gentle, and loving. Yes. A lot of people are scared now to give out their affection oh, yeah. because they're so insecure about their own standing. Absolutely. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, God, for this man of glory and pastor in this church. I know. Yes. We just want to say thank you, pastor, and your beautiful wife. You. Without yes. further ado, a man who comes up and puts no cut on it, no cut. That gospel, yeah. straight, no chase. <laughs> Our pastor, yes. Van der Glans. Thank you. Thank you. you know, we, we are really fortunate, and um, we're holding on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're holding on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just sometimes when you think about it, if you want to, just ask the people that you're around. Do they have Bible study? Yeah. Do they, do you attend Bible study? Mm -hmm. And I dare say that all of them, if not most of them, will tell you, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. And um, Jesus says in John 10, 10, give me that please. Mm -hmm. He says in John 10, 10, yeah. uh, people shy away from what's hard. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to be blessed. Yeah. You want to be blessed. Yeah. Um, I talked to a man today, Lady Deborah, and he said that if we have a job fair, nobody show up. Mm. Oh. Mm. But if we're giving away free food, we oh. got to laugh from him there. Yeah. 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 Uh, often say, and I forgot to tell you that Shirley told me that she, she, she had a shirt made. She's going to make me one, a, a hat. I really don't wear them, but you know, she'll make me a hat. And the hat says, I want a blessing a lazy man can have. Right. And, 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 and that's just true. The, the Bible says that the diligent soul shall be made fat. Mm. You know, you, if, if, if you won't, get up off of your rusty dusty yes, and do nothing. And I'm of this man right here, uh, 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 Robert. Uh, I'm not going to work to feed you. Right. And you won't get up and do nothing. Uh, and I'm sorry. I got Bible on. Thessalonians says that those among you that won't work, they should not eat. Yeah. God said that. I didn't say that. Yeah, right. And, and, and uh, you have to put forth an effort. Mm -hmm. Put forth an effort. And what I found out, Sister Cynthia, is that God will bless your effort. You know, and you have to get past that fear. Yeah. Many times we have fear that if I do this, it ain't nothing going to come of it. Mm -hmm. But I found out that the results business is God. Yeah. My, I'm just a foot soldier. I just do what's before me, the right, the next right thing. And God, the Bible says, and we know that all things work together yeah. for good. Truly, Lady Deborah, we don't know how anything will turn out. That's right. We can do the best that we can, yeah. uh, raising our children. We can do the best we can on our job. Yeah. Uh, come to work every day, do everything we know. And still, we might get a pink slip in the morning and tell us we don't need you anymore. Right. We leave the results in God's hand. Yeah. And that's what I was telling Brother Alex when we were singing that song about God is and God is. I said, yeah, he is. But sometimes uh, I, I, I get to fall for it. Sometimes. I, I, I don't mind being patient, but I just don't like to wait. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, and it's okay. Because Paul says, we are not of those that have confidence in ourselves. Yeah. And I just feel a whole lot more comfortable now knowing that God doesn't expect anything out of me. Right. Knowing that God only wants me, Robert, to get out the way. Yeah. If I get out the way, he'll do this. He'll live the life through me. Yeah. He does not want me to try to live right. He does not want me to ask him to forgive me. All God wants me to do, Lady Devil, is to place my faith in the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then there will be a translation. I want to talk about that tonight. The lost was lost in translation. Yeah. Uh, the church is off because we, we got lost. We got lost from what? Uh, and the reason is, is because we won't read. And the next thing is, is that we got people teaching us that have to read. Yeah. Uh, that just deal with our emotions and give us a quick fix. Uh, it's the last day that you're going to be broken. And there's miracles coming your way. And God's going to do this. And, and, and God's going to do that. And that's the reason that the church has lost respect. 
Do you know that people don't respect lazy people? No. Folks, folks don't respect folks that won't get up and, 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 and won't do nothing. Amen. And many times, you know, we want to say to, 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 to the other race, you say, y'all prejudiced. But we see how you act. I they never, I'm, I'm just dismayed. I go in stores now, and it'd be black people pull up in there. Down here, no voice, they didn't help them. It'd be black people, they'd be talking to you like they don't even know I'm here. Yeah. Don't you know I'm a customer? Mm -hmm. Don't you know it matters what I hear, what you're saying? They're cussing. They're talking all about their personal business and all that. That's not supposed to be. No. I'm not even supposed to hear you. You're supposed to wait till I leave for y'all to talk about that. But they don't even have that kind. I'm tired, girl. I, mean, I ain't had my break. I, want, I, I, I shouldn't. But you, you see, and then we said we don't want them. We, we they don't want us in our neighborhoods and everything. And now we live in that neighborhood where we stay right now, and it's a crime shame. Yeah. All around us and everything. You won't clean up nothing. I go further than that. Our people get churches. <laughs> we got a habit of going and get their churches when they get through with them. When we get to churches and stuff, and won't even paint. <laughs> when we raise the money, we take all the money and go buy some Cadillac. Oh. We won't even paint the church. Yeah. And so I'm just telling you, you know, I'm, I'm just for right, y'all. Yeah. I'm just for right, and yeah. I'm, I'm humble enough to listen to right. I don't know it all. I'm listening to you, see if you saying anything make any sense. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know who God going to speak to. I don't know what kind of direction. But I've gone wrong long enough. Yeah. When you've been on the wrong road long enough, so you ought to have rabbit sense or, or something. You want to turn around and, and, and just to do better. Yeah. Amen. I know we can't do better, Brother Alex. If we don't have Bible study, That's right. you got to start somewhere. Yeah, amen. You got to start somewhere, and most of us too busy. We ain't studying our Bible at home. At least on Wednesday night, we come out and get, and get a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We can get a little bit. We might as well be honest with one another. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. right. <laughs> Here the Bible says in verse ten, He said, "The thief, which is the enemy, we have an enemy to our soul. We have an adversary that really wants to make havoc of our life." And have us to live but not be able to enjoy what God gives us. Right. Now, the devil and nobody else can't stop God from blessing you. Amen. Nobody. You can't stop God from blessing you. But what he does is he makes it where you can't enjoy it, mother. Yeah. It's just like if you got a, a sumptuous meal, but then you got to sit down and you eat a cricket on a, on a dirty plate. It takes away from it. Yes. You, you see? You got a beautiful automobile, you got a nice house, y'all got everything that it takes, but the devil come in and come in between you, and let me tell you something, relationships are not as easy as they try to make you think. Right. It's very few people that got good relationships with people. They got picks and chooses. Yeah. They got folks they treat all right, and then they got other folks out on food with you. Glory to God. But good relationships but God will give us all this walking around sense once that we allow him yeah. to lead and to guide us. God ain't meant for us to mistreat nobody. nobody. I don't care if they got something they can give you or if they don't. We, you know, the folks that got something to give us, we treat them good. Uh. But folks that ain't got nothing to give us and everything, we treat them any kind of way. Just get out of my way. Yeah. You see? What I find out is a matter of that God has fixed it up where we all need each other. Amen. Each, each member of the body feeds the other, the other part. Yeah. And so he said, the thief come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yeah. <clears throat> but he said that I am come yeah. that they might have life. Yeah. That they might have life. Now, life is more than just breathing. Mm -hmm. My life is more just like Lady Devon. <clears throat> little kids think that when they get up and they start getting a little hair on their body, and when their voice get deep and everything, and when they start knowing a little bit of something like that, they think they're grown. You ain't paid damn bill. You ain't got goose sense. You don't know how to do nothing and everything, but you grown. Okay? Just because we walking around breathing and we got a job and got a car, it does not mean that you have life. It doesn't. Give me first. Give me John. John, uh, John, uh, one. <clears throat> but now I understand why, to a certain extent, a lot of people don't go to Bible study because they ain't studying the Bible. Mm. It's just another opportunity for them to be. Mm. <laughs> John 1, hear what he says. He said, in the beginning was the Word. This is John declaring 
John said he wrote his gospel that you might know that he was the Son of God. In other words, that he was God, Tyler. Uh, and he says, <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so then Christ, the Father, and the Holy Ghost, all three are one. You said to me, Pastor, how did it be? How do you have three that be one? I don't know. I don't know. When I came in, I cut the light on. I don't know how that happened. It, I know it is. You know, I know this right here. I know that I have had brought Brother Robert Wright an encounter with God. Yeah. And I, I encountered him through weakness, not through strength. I got so weak that God introduced himself to me. All right. And God lifted me. Yeah. And now, once he lifted me from where I was, now, he let me get to the place that I for sure couldn't lift myself. Yeah. Well, no doubt in my mind that I'm through. If this, I'm this right here, God don't help me. I'm, I'm through. I, I'm not coming out of this. My mind and the real battle, it wasn't so much as being broke. It wasn't so much of folk talking about you. The battle was in my mind. My mind was such a, it was in such a state of confusion that I knew I couldn't come out of it myself. And God lifted me from that, moved it just like it wasn't even there. The problem just was gone without any effort on my part except surrendering to God. And I came out of that, Brother Alex, saying, I, I, I know it was God. I don't care what y'all say. You can say it, that it was coincidence. You can say that these folks done brainwashed me. But I know that I know that I know oh, that it yeah. was God that brought me yeah. out. So he says here, <clears throat> Uh, the same was in the beginning with God. Look at verse 3. All things were made by him. All, is that what it says? Yeah. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was a lost in translation. You see, the devil can't stop God from blessing you. The devil can't stop God from saving you. Because the Bible says that he chose us. We didn't choose him. Y'all, I did not want to be saved. I did. I wanted some other things that didn't have nothing to do with salvation. That's, that's the God and honest truth. But he came and got me. Yeah. God came and got me and he took me hostage. Oh, no. And I can't get away from him. Thank you, Lord. And you know what, Mother? He gave me life. Yeah. I thought I was living. All right. But the life that he infused into me was a life yeah. that I had never known before. Oh, it, it was a life... But watch this. He gave me life, and he did it without any of my help. But then I got to fooling with church folks, and church folks told me, this is how you get to God, A, B, C, D. Now, ain't none of that happened. I didn't do none of that. But they convinced me because, you see, we like to think that we did something. Mm -hmm. We, we love, that, that, that's just human beings, y'all. We love to hear our name called. Yeah. We, we, we love for folks to give us credit. Well, uh, we, we love, you know, to be lifted up and, and, and all that. And so when you tell me that I got to do this right here and that right there to be with God and everything, then that sounds good to me. And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what I adhere to. But you see, what happens when you do that is you fall from grace. Yes. See, grace is the highest that you can get. Mm -hmm. When God just comes for no reason. Mm -hmm. See, ain't no love. Like when people love you for no reason. Yeah. Ain't nothing like when don't nobody want you. You 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 you're stinking. You you rotten. You messed up. You ain't got no money or nothing like that. And then some that person that come when you and you we walk off from that person. Right. The person who loves us when we ain't got nothing. Soon as we can get up and everything, we go on to somebody that wouldn't have had nothing to say to us if we. Mm. I seen it happen a whole lot of times. Yeah. And so he says in him was life. Mm. Yeah. He put life into me. Yeah. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about just breathing and walking around. But I'm talking about life. Yeah. I'm talking about it ain't got nothing to do with money you got in your pocket. It ain't got nothing to do with who like you and who don't like you. Mm -hmm. But you just got joy down in yeah. your soul. You, you, ever, yeah. you ever just been out in God's nature and everything? Or maybe we like to go to the beach and the water. You ever just sat out there and just looked at the water and everything and you... Thank you, Jesus. You know that God, oh, oh my yeah. God, you feel so close to him. He said, in him was life. Now watch this. He said, and the light was the light yeah. of me. Yeah. Then he said, and the light shined yeah. in darkness. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. You ain't going to never be recognized by this word. Uh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? 
Most of us, we the most foolish child our mama had. <laughs> let, let them tell it you and everything. You know, you ain't, you know, they, when somebody else in the family do something, they just lift them up, they just whatever, and everything. But what you do, you know, I, people got a way of making your stuff all, you know. I see your little car, I see your little house that y'all got over there. A woman told me one time and everything, she was, she was married to a doctor. I was in law school. And she came over to my house and everything. I was proud of the house. It was the best house we had lived in, you know. Because, you know, I got off cocaine and everything. But she made a step. She said, well, this little house bigger than it looked when on the outside. We, you know, folks got a habit of making your stuff. You see what I'm saying? And that's the reason. Let me tell you, God told me this right here. I teach identity theology. I teach identity theology. You see, your, your psychological state is tied in to your identity. Who you think you are yeah. is very important. Yeah. Because when your circumstances look like you ain't nobody, when people start treating you like you nobody, nobody. Yeah. then you can stand up like Paul and Paul said, you are right. You are stating facts about I was not with Jesus and that I persecuted the church. But he says, by the grace of God, not by my marriage, not because I work for it or nothing, but God's grace, by his grace, I am what I am. Yeah. I got about three folks here that said, Pastor, that's the only way I made it. Because I knew. And that's the reason Sister Cynthia is very, I thank God for egging at a blame. Yeah. And and I, I knew your folks as well. When you have a strong support system, yeah. Yeah. when you got parents mm. that will help you to keep your identity, and Lady Deborah, one of the worst things that we ever did was when we integrated with them other folks. Right. Because we had our own identity. Come on, y'all. Yeah. But we had our own identity. We had teachers and stuff that would make sure that we got our lesson. Oh, they made, yeah. they went farther than that. They made sure you cold your hat. Yes, they made sure you took a bath. They would embarrass you if you come to, come to school or something like that. Right, right. And they can help to give us an identity. Yeah. And yes, it may be rough. Yes, you may have been dealt the wrong, a bad hand. Yes, they may not like you. But you keep climbing. You keep moving. You can make it because of what's inside. Oh, yeah. And what's wrong with the church is, is that yeah. they don't know who they are. Yeah. It's been lost in translation. Yeah. Over in Colossians, Colossians, the Bible says, and says, he have translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his discipline. I do not reside in the kingdom of darkness anymore. It don't make no difference. I'm going to do some dark things. Yes. But that's not where I live. Right. Somebody once said, I may have done the things that you say I did, but I am not who you said yeah. that I am. Right. I am who God has made me. Yeah. And the thing about it is, uh, give, me, give me Romans 8, please. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. It's been lost in translation. And guess what's the matter? Uh, if the devil can keep you All right. from Bible study, if he can keep your pastor from studying, if he can keep him from, from humbling himself, yeah. well, God can feed him and give you your identity. You when you stay lost. You stay lost. You keep going to work. You still buy, you keep buying your kids uh, tennis shoes. You keep uh, looking like you're doing something and whatever, but you ain't going nowhere. nowhere. The reason you ain't going nowhere is because you don't know who you are. Right. And you are, if you don't know who you are, you will not be able to stand against the assault of the devil. Because the Bible says that he is at the roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Let me make this point right here, y'all. None of us are exempt from the attacks of the devil. All right. None of us. Your marriage ain't so good that your marriage can't be attacked. Right. Your child ain't so wonderful that you done raised them and bought them a PlayStation and you always went with them. And I, I did the same thing for man. I told Eddie that was not long ago. I said, we might have well left on the side of the road. <laughs> the devil going to attack you. And that's the reason that the Bible tells us in Ephesians, Mother Brewer, you, you read where he said, put on the whole armor of 
God. And he gives a reason why you put the armor on. Yeah. That you may be able to withstand yeah. in the evil day. Yeah. All hell going to break loose in your house. Yeah. They know you to whining and crying and telling nobody about it. They got problems just like you. Yeah. Yeah. Like the song said, take said, what a friend mm -hmm. we have yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. And then it goes on to say, you know, I can't remember a song like that, but somewhere they say, say oh, what needless, so what pain we bear. All yeah. because we do not carry yeah. everything to God in prayer. Yeah. He is our help. Yes, he is. He's a very, as a matter of fact, David says, it's a matter of fact, he's a very present help. Yeah. Yes. He's a very present help. Oh, yeah. You know, the thing about it is that folks say they're going to help you, but it looks like they ain't coming. Huh. But he's a very present mm -hmm. In Romans, the 10th chapter, he said he's not uh -huh. in the word that's in your mouth. All you got to do is call on him. Call I on. promise you, all hey. you got to do is call hey. on him. He's there all the time. Yeah. Look what he says. And we know, I'm in Romans 8 28, we know that all things work together for good to them. So, therefore, you see, Brother Alex, I can't get messed up and thrown off by my circumstances. Right. That's the reason that Paul says, I've learned how to be content. Yeah. How can you be content? Because he may not come when I want him. But he's on, he's going to be right on to God is working it out. You see, God can see around corners, ladies and gentlemen. I can't see around corners. But help is on the way. Yeah. But I got the hold, I got the weight. I got yeah. Yeah. Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It's working together. It's working together oh, yeah. for my good. Uh, it was a sister, my very dear sister, man, who, is, who, who has uh, cancer, and now that she's had to cut her hair off and everything, what beautiful thing, her daughter cut her hair off along with her, yeah. the same yeah. way you did with Sue. Yeah. And, and she said, I can't sleep. That was the last thing. She said, I can't sleep. I can't find no sleep. And this is what God gave me to tell her. I said, darling, you can't sleep so that you will be able to help those that can't sleep, that ain't connected, connected like you are. Yeah. You see, we don't go through what we go through for ourselves, yeah. but we go through so we can let the next person that's coming through that don't know God tell them, baby, I've been there, but God will bring you. He will bring you through. It does not mean that God is not with you because you are in unfamiliar territory or because the adversary and the enemy is all around. Y'all remember the prophet? And when his uh, Gehazi, his servant, got all this because he saw the armies of Syria all around him and he said they got us surrounded boss we, we ain't gonna make it or nothing and the prophet didn't even he didn't get all messed up because he knew that God was yet in charge and so he just knelt and prayed under God he said God show them show Gehazi open up his eyes where he can see that more is for us than that is against us and the Bible says that God opened up his eyes and there was an army of angels that's all around around them. Thank you, Jesus. And so then, you know, we have to have Bible study in order to build up our faith, in order to hold on. And ain't no use of everybody looking for somebody to do something for them. Let me tell you something. Politics is all right, but it run out. <laughs> yeah. You may not be the one that's in office now. You know, you know, when when Trump was in office, you know, they, the, the lawyers got to be appointed, the U.S. attorney, and they you this and that and you use this and that. But as soon as Biden came in and everything, he told them, y'all need to pack your stuff up. <laughs> I don't want nothing man can take away. I don't want nothing man to take away. When I was in the other church over there, I used to hear him tell people, I, I'm giving you your license, you preacher, because ain't no man called me to preach. This, 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 this is nothing. This ain't no big, this is not no, no nothing for me to put up no crown or nothing like that. I, I got titles, I got degrees. I don't need reverend or nothing like that. But they said, just like we gave you this, we'll take it away. And that I made up my mind right then. You know what? You can keep that. You can keep that. You can keep that. I told y'all a long time ago. It's not what you have that make your life wonderful. It's what you can do without. And I, I specialize in not asking nobody for nothing. And I don't know if it's some kind of pride or this and that and everything. If I ain't got it, Sister Cynthia, I'll do without it. 
I, I can do without it. Because the thing about it is, and you know, I, I, I take from y'all when y'all give me, because I know it's from your heart. But the thing about it is, Brother Herman, most of the time when people give you stuff, it be strings on it. You want to come back to me and tell me, well, you know what, I, I did this and I didn't know, you know what, you don't do nothing for me. If you ain't do it, but out, of, out of the goodness of your heart or whatever, even folks want to come to church. I paid my tithes, I did this, and when my light bill came due, the, they didn't, the church didn't give me nothing. It's not the bank. You wouldn't put nothing in to take nothing out. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing here for you. When you give it here, ain't no, no refund, no nothing. You gave that. When you give it, that's it. Don't, don't look for it. Don't come back for it. Don't, don't get no consideration for it or nothing. And that's the reason we don't do no begging. We don't do no, no, we're asking the church. We're asking everybody, would you dig deep? We're asking, would you bless the church? Because you know the church got to go on. Thank you, Jesus. He says, for whom, look at verse, for verse, for verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. It helps me to know that God knows me. It helps me. You know what? This is funny, y'all, but I promise y'all, I used to hide from God. Now, how can you hide from God? The Bible says that, that, that everything is naked and open to him. Yeah. Ain't nowhere you can go. Uh, David said, if I make my, my, bed, my bed in hell, he'll be there. Ain't nowhere I can go to hide from God. And so that's the reason I'm so glad to find out, Sister Madeline, that I'm saved by grace through faith. In other words, there is no merit. There's no, no, no qualification. There's no requirement. God just out of the goodness of his heart, the same way we feel about our babies and sure enough about our grandbabies. You see what I'm saying? That little grandbaby of mine, y'all think she, you know, I be making them pictures and everything. Y'all think she really loved me and all that. I go up in there and look at her and everything. She might turn her head and don't look, don't look back my way. And that don't mean nothing to me. I yet love the ground she walk in. The slob and the spit that she got, she spit all in my face, mouth and everything. I, I'm not been to thank you, Jesus. I just love her. I just love her. And I know God feel the same way about me. God told me, say, you, you, you preaching identity theology. You see, they made God's love conditional. They made it where God only loves you when you're a certain way. Mother, that's not love. That's not love. You using me. Are uh, you just controlling me? They made God to be a control. You ever seen people like that that they can't have nothing to do with you unless they're controlling you? Yeah. He, he y'all supposed to been friends for years. Yeah. And the one time that you tell them no, the one time that you don't do what they think you're supposed to do and everything, then you mm, mm, and things get different then. They, they don't they don't feel feel that way about you. No, God, God is not, God not small. God petty. It was Bishop D.L. Lindsay that told me, he looked over those glasses, those friends, and he looked at me, mother, I'll never forget. And he told me, he said, son, I said, yes, sir. He said, treat people better than they treat you. He said, I'll make you a bigger person. Yeah. Out of all the things he said to me, he said, I, three or four of them, I remember, I remember that. And I try my best to practice, but it get hard sometimes. Especially when people laugh at you and ridicule you and do things. Folks will, folks, folks will hit you and then sit up and ask you, why are you hurting? You, you see? But I found out that when you move, you move aside and let God come through, his spirit, kindness, and love, you'll overcome them. The Bible even says, he said, overcome evil with good. Overcome. That's why I'm at Bible study tonight, y'all. I, I, all the other old stuff, I know how to do it. I don't, <laughs> that stuff that they teaching and all that, I know I do that already. You know, and God, man, you know, I'm that about, you got to, you're going to get to this check, you're going to do that already. I got my money they got right now. You know, the money won't do it. I'm walking around right here, got money in every bank trying to figure out how to commit suicide without hurting my family. Yeah. I don't believe that. I don't believe money will make you happy no more. You know? But now, don't get it wrong. I ain't happy broke either. Thank you, dear. <laughs> he said... For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be, predestinate to be lost in translation. Did I forget what God said? I have to take God at his word. Faith means I take God at his word. I don't let no Negro uh, explain away what God has said. No, God really didn't mean that. What he meant was this right here. Well, I know that people that don't me really mean what they said, I don't believe them. Make it plain to me. 
I will stop you and ask you what, 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 now what, you, what you really saying. Because I want to get a good understanding of what you said before I leave. Now, now you got folks that self-centered and all into themselves that the whole time you talking, they ain't even listening to you. They thinking. They thinking about what they going to say when you get through to negate everything that you said. Well, yeah, yeah, but, 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 you know, me and you ain't gonna have too many more conversations because I can't help you. I can't help you. And God told me this about six months ago, Brother Alex. God said, I've been too good to you. I done blessed you too uh, tremendously for you to allow people to diminish the quality of your life by you trying to control them. Do you know that when you, could, when you start trying to make folk act like you want them to act, yeah. the quality of your life go down? Mm -mm. I want it just like you want it. However you want it, that's how I want it. If you come to town and you ain't got time to stop by to see me, that's how I want it. That's how I want it. Because you know I'm like Lady Deborah. Lady Deborah said I pull my own little happy wagon. Because I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it's, it's something you don't get but one. I, I've had clients to come and they, but this is my first offense. Yeah, but you rape somebody. You don't get but you don't you don't get but one of one of them. What you mean? Yeah, uh, either you murder somebody. This is my first offense. I ain't never been in trouble with you. Sometimes you don't get but one. You don't get but one life. And you sit around talking about what other folk wouldn't let you do and how they held you down and how that's you. That ain't nobody else. And I know this about abusers. And all of us have been abused, and some, some of us being abused now. I know this about abusers, Sister Nella Trice. You have to stop it. They never gonna stop it. And that's just like this stuff that, about the voting rights and the, and the stuff about the police brutality and all that. They, they got white privilege. Ain't nobody just gonna get that up. If I was white, I feel the same way. That's, you know, that's just y'all, that's y'all problem. You, you see, they, they're not going to just give away privilege. Give away privilege. Larry Deborah laughs sometimes because, you know, I drive like I want to drive. I drive like I want to drive. And they stop me and stuff like this right here. I'm going 70, 80 miles. She just sit over there and just look, Fred. And when I tell you, no, I don't send them down. When they see who I am and everything, all right then. We'll just go and slow it down. Go down. And when they leave, she just look over there and just do like this right here. Because when she got a speeding ticket, when you got a last speeding ticket, baby, about, about three years ago, they so pitiful, Tara. When they get a ticket, because the boy, you know, I talk to them bad. And I'm speeding all the time, but I'm talking to them bad. Then I need you to take care of this. What? <laughs> you don't know what the speed limit was? But that's my privilege, you see what I'm saying? I don't care about they don't have the pay privilege that. You got to stop it. You got to stop it. The abuse stops right here. Nobody, mama, auntie, children, nobody have the right to abuse you. That you, you are God's child. You're too special. God died for you in order for you to enjoy your life who God you'll never be any better than what God made you to be and in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the doctor comprehended of the darkness was not able to put it out light exposes everything and that's the reason they get messed up when you come around because you, you ain't did nothing to them you ain't said nothing to them about what they're doing but you expose them for who they really are and that's a fool because the Bible said the fool have said in his heart that there is no God. And because you run around talking about you believe in God, that don't mean that you actually know God. You actually know God. If you don't think, if you don't know that God is your only hope, if you don't know that God is your only way, if you still think that it's something in you, you don't know. You know him, mother, when you come to the end of yourself. You do. And that's what I say all the time. You can't be too dumb for God, but you can't be too smart. And that's when Paul said, look ye among ye. See your calling, not many wise, not many noble. 
you don't see many folk with all them degrees behind them and whatever, because they, 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 they know. They don't, they, they ain't in the shape that you in. You know what? But I thank God that God didn't let no degrees or no money get in my way. I'm so glad that he did. Because the life of God is a wonderful thing. Look what the Bible says. It says he predestinated. What did he predestinate us to do? When he translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Tara, this is what really frustrated me when I was uh, over at the other church. <laughs> because I knew that it was more to it. I knew we weren't doing what we supposed to be doing. I know that I wasn't. <laughs> you, ever, you ever just known that you ain't even on the right track? You ever just come to the realization and say, this ain't never going nowhere? It was so useless what I was doing over there at the other church. But I just wanted to go to church because I had kids and I didn't want to be out of church. But, but I knew, this is y'all ain't talking about nothing. We're not going anywhere. You are not improving my life. I'm here in order to improve my life, improve my family life, and whatever. This is not going to happen automatic. It's not going to happen automatic, y'all. And look like to me, Madeline, they got happen when things happen. When people fail, when stuff happens, folks, kids, kids went to jail, uh, and Lord have mercy, don't let nobody get divorced. That was, that was just wonderful. See, that, that was the proof to them that, that these folks, see, they ain't got it. But I want you to know you can have it and still get into divorce. Lady Deborah and I, we've been to the, we been to the, the uh, lawyer's office several times. And so I know it can happen. And so I thank God for it. Because now, so you know, sometimes when people ain't never had nothing happen in their life cricket, they think they're better than other folk. I don't know how, how in the world did that happen? And whatever. Keep going to bed and waking up. Keep getting, I'm going to tell you something, though. But when the enemy come in like a flood. And just like Joseph told his brothers. Y'all laughed and keep key and nah, would we'll be down there in that pit. And you ain't seen me for years. But when you ran up on me, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when you ran up on me, you was hungry, and I'm the one that had to feed you. <laughs> See, God had to do this right here in order that the life of many might be saved. I had to go from the pit to Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house down to the prison. Then I had to help people who walked off and act like they didn't even know who I was. But one day, one day they called me up from here and made me second in command. And God is so good, Lady Deborah, that I'm better and I'm not better. I ain't walking around talking about what I'm gonna get nobody for what they did to me or not. You meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. God meant it for good. What are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is put on, put, put on your seatbelt. Buckle up. It ain't like they told us. In order for me to be able to comfort other people, I got to go through hell myself. You have a ministry. You have a use. God, God look at here. Y'all, we done, I mean, you know, we don't bought many pants as we want. We got tennis shoes and you know, I see the tennis, I want I just like tennis. I want to buy another pair. I ain't wearing the ones I got. It's it's a bigger purpose than that. We are here to help one another. And as bad as you think it is. It's somebody that would jump over six or seven to just live one day like you living right now. Like you living right now. You blessed. But you blessed to be a blessing. You blessed to be a blessing. And that's the reason that Jesus says more blessed to give than it is to receive. The best Christmas I ever had in my life was right after I got off of cocaine and uh, uh, it was this woman that was on dope that was up at the hospital and she gave us a list of stuff that she wanted. She had like about four children and whatever. I don't think she ever got off of dope. That don't matter. You know, it's what God and, and we, I didn't have no money really. I went to the church and some of the people in the church gave me money. It was a good church. Just like, just like this one right here. And the folks were kind and they gave me some money. I think Deborah, we might have had like $86. And we went to Walmart and, and bought this and bought that. We had a whole bag full of stuff for $86 for the kids. And I can remember Cricket going up stairs there in St. Vincent up to the treatment center and gave it to her. 
when we, I had Vanna Jr. and Jeremy with me. When we got back on that elevator, so Cynthia, the feeling that I had in my heart. It, it, it ain't nothing. And so when we go through hell, God is loading up our bag Amen. where we have something to give. Yeah. And that's reading that the Bible says that we have not a high priest. I can't go to, when I'm going to God about being hungry, he ain't never been hungry. When I'm going to God about people lying on it, but see, he came down in flesh and he lived this life. And the Bible says we don't have a high priest who can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He feels me. He feels me when I'm getting lonely. He feels me when I feel set aside, when I feel like that nobody understands. Don't nobody, I ain't got nobody. I ain't got nobody. I got a good friend, Brother Robert Earl Davis, uh, that, that some of the things Lady Deborah that he shared with me is just so profound and it helped me. He said, you know, love, well as I know, my, I still got a mom. All I know, I may not have one, but well as I know. But he told me this, Mother Bro. He said, well, Vandal, he said, this was so bad about not having no mother. He had just lost his mother. I, I went to the funeral. He said, this is what bad about not having no mother. He said, you can't be no kid no more. He said, as long as you got a mama, you can go home. You can sit at that table. He said, but when mama gone, you, you don't have, have nowhere to go. But I heard Jesus say through, through, through David in Psalm 27, he said, when my mother and father forsake me, said, then the Lord will. Die. I hadn't been through it, but he never failed me yet, Brother Alex. I just believe that if I place my faith and trust in him, yeah. you know what I'm saying, Robin? I, I know you believe it too. I just believe no matter what comes, if I place my faith and trust in God, some way, somehow, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You know, and it ain't be when I want it. But when it comes, it's going to be right on time. Clap your hands for the Lord. I'm through.